thing that you would get to know about me if you stick around with me long enough is I'm not a fan of conflict. Actually, I do my very best to try to be a peacemaker when there's stuff going on in the home, when there's stuff going on at, at work or wherever it may be. I, I don't like conflict and, and peace, well, I, I, I kind of like to be in a place of peace. Actually, a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday morning, I actually, our first Sunday back together at the church, we talked about peace and the importance of peace. And, and I mentioned a few things. I, I wonder if you knew that uh, uh, some of the biggest peace treaties made in the world, and there's like 8,000 of them through the course of history, were broken. I, I, have, to, uh, I have to marvel at Sir... Neville Chamberlain, but he was the Prime Minister of the UK from 1937 to 1940. So he had this conference with Hitler, and uh, he came out of this conference very positive and hopeful. And his words were, "Peace in our time, peace in or peace with honor." And he thought he had it all set up with Hitler. Well, it was one year later that Hitler invaded Poland, and on September 3rd, 1939, Great Britain declared war on Germany. As I said a couple of weeks ago, peace is something we seek after, but it's not necessarily something that we have experienced a, a whole lot of it. Here today in Ephesians, we want to talk about peace, and Paul talks about having peace with Christ, but he talks about three very important words that we need to look at when it comes to that. And it, he starts by looking at the word separation. Let's jump to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. This is what it said. Therefore, remember that formerly you who were called Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcised, the, the, that done in the body by the hands of man, Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. Now, most of the converts in the area of, of Ephesus, in the Ephesus church, were non-Jews or they were Gentiles, as they were called at that time. They were known as the uncircumcised by the Jewish Christians that were known as the circumcised. Aren't you glad that, first of all, we don't have to have circumcision, hallelujah, but aren't you glad we are not known as Christians by some outward appearance? Well, hopefully not. I think sometimes we judge people by the way they look. I think of myself, I, I've shared this before, when I was working in construction and we went for a walk to, uh, to go pick up something to drink from a, from a store and I'm walking down the street in my work clothes and I must have looked the part because people took one look at me and they quickly rolled up their windows and, and locked their doors. I'm a pastor for crying out loud as if I'm going to do anything to you. But sometimes we judge people by outward appearance, don't we? And, and in this case, people were judged by an outward ceremony, circumcision. But uh, what these people were known by, or should have been known by, is not by an outward appearance, but what was inside and what they were without. And it, Paul describes them as being without a few things. First of all, they were without Christ. See, the Ephesus, the church in Ephesus and the Ephesians, they worship the goddess Diana. And before the coming of the gospel, they knew nothing about Jesus. There is a lot of religions today, folks, that have decent standards, but they do not have Jesus. As I said on, on Sunday, uh, from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. And see, here's the thing. If we're looking for peace and we don't have Jesus, there's a real big problem because you're not going to find it. You're going to find counterfeits. You're going to find possibilities, but you will not actually find true peace. They were without Jesus. Secondly, they were without citizenship. Paul said they were excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise. God called the Jews out and he gave them a place. He made them into a nation. These people did not have the benefits of the Jews that the Jews had. 
And if you think about us here today, now we are all citizens, hopefully of some country, uh, but, but you think about it, we have a place in what is called the church. Now, I, I got to be honest, the church has messed up many, many times and has done some, some dumb things. We have condemned, we have criticized, and we have, we have made a lot of mistakes, unfortunately, and we have to try to work these things out. But as, as many mistakes that we have made, Jesus still loves the church, and he still wants us to belong, to be part of the family, to be there to encourage each other. And not only are we part of this family, but we're part of a citizenship. The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven, and we have that hope as we have committed our life to Jesus. These people with, were without that citizenship. They were thirdly without hope. They were excluded from citizenship in heaven and foreigners to the covenant of the promise without hope. The historians tell us that there is a great cloud of hopelessness that kind of hung over the church at, or sorry, the country at that time, the ancient world. See, the philosophies at the time were empty. The traditions were disappearing. Religious Religions were powerless to help people when it came to life and death, and there was a real lack of hope. We have a lot of people that don't have hope, even in the church, actually. I had a call uh, a week ago from a, from a mother talking about how her kids were in a school that was promoting the, the, uh, the whole concept of, of a sexual fluid, fluidity, meaning you could be a boy or a girl whenever you wanted. And these were grade three kids that were told you don't have to be a boy anymore, you can be a girl. And there was such a sense of hopelessness. And she says, man, I'm just going to pull these kids out of school and put them into a private school and things will be better. Well, let's be honest. The, the hopelessness that we see won't change because of geography. The hopelessness will change when we begin to put our hope in the one who provides that eternal assurance for us, and that is through Christ. These people didn't have hope. They were without hope, and they were without God. You know, Paul discovered in Athens that there are multiple, multiple gods that people worship. Actually, someone said in that day that it's easier to find a god in Athens than it is to find a man. Man, that is crazy, the amount of different gods that they actually worship. Even today, we look at the Hindu religion, where they, they worship 33 million different gods. And you're sitting there going, oh my goodness, how do you ever keep track of all that? Well, you can't. See, peace is understanding that there is one true God, a God that loves you, a God that cares about you, a God that has a plan for you, a future for you, as putting your faith within that God. I'm wondering, what are you without? Now, I'm not talking about physical stuff and, and you know, all the things we want, man. I don't have a, I'm without a boat, I'm without whatever it may be. No, no, what are you without inside of you? Are there areas where you are not finding fulfillment? I want to encourage you. God wants to fill your life with peace and with strength. We're going to talk more about that next week. But he wants to fill your life with that hope. But it's got to start by us taking a quick look at where are we grounded in? Are we truly grounded in Jesus? Are we part of the church and being involved? Yeah, even COVID, you can still be involved by connecting this way or connecting through wherever, social media. Are you finding hope in your relationship with God? See, it's got to start with that intense relationship between you and the Father. Father, I thank you that you have given us a future, a hope, you've given us peace. And Lord, as we look at these people in Ephesus at the time, we know that they were lost and trying to figure things out. And they finally got it when they grasped onto the truth of Christ and their lives were turned around. I pray for whoever is listening to me today who maybe is floundering right now, finding difficulty in their situation, in their world. Let them find hope, let them find peace, let them find fulfillment in you. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful God, so we commit ourselves to you and ask you to intervene in a powerful way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining me here this morning. Looking forward to seeing you again. This Sunday is Father's Day. 
Remind, reminder that Saturday we have a drive through for dads. Please join me here. I will see you between 12 and 2. God bless you. See you then.